we heading? Tell you when we pick up Jamie. Chicken or something? Come on, move it! What do you punk think you're doing anyway? What was that you called us? Well, I just bought that car. Now look. I told you no. Going out, as soon as the guys come by to get me. But Tarzan, it's already after eight. I don't know why you can't stay home for one evening. Your father be home in a little bit. Should be home now. Just where is it you're going, Jamie? If I knew, I'd tell you. I don't know. some guy in a big Buick and he gets out and starts getting smart. Yes, yeah, that's calling his names. Boy, did we give it to him. We sure messed him up. You should have been there, Jamie. Who was he? Nah, I don't know. Some big bald-headed guy. What kind of a car did you say it was? Oh, it was a... Uh... What's the matter with you? I asked you what kind of a car it was. I want to know. It was a yellow Buick. Why? What do you want to know for, Jamie? <laughs> What's his trouble? I don't know, but this isn't the place to find out. We'll see him in the morning at school when we give this to him. How's Dad? How did you know? I I heard it over the radio. How is he? He'll be all right. He's resting now. He was terribly shaken up and bruised, though. Oh, it makes me sick to think about it. Jamie. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry. There's nothing for you to be sorry about, son. It wasn't your fault. I'm all right now. You'd better get upstairs to bed. I'm sorry, Dad.
Better take this back, Jamie. We didn't know it was your dad, Jamie. We wouldn't have done it if we'd known. Leave me alone. Take it, Jamie. You keep it. I don't want anything more to do with it. Now look, Jamie, don't get smart. Don't forget, you could have been along instead of one of us. Could have been one of our dads. Wouldn't see me moping around if it had been my old man. Don't worry. I'm not forgetting a thing. Just count me out from now on. There he is. Jamie, we want to talk to you. He's busy. Have you seen the paper this morning, Jamie? Have you read about the special session of the city council they're having this morning? And all the things they're talking about doing. A curfew, upping the age of driver's licenses, canceling the football games, the parties, the dances, and everything else. And it isn't fair, Jamie. Most of the high school students haven't had anything to do with the things that have been happening. Like last night, and the statue that was broken, and the theater seats, and all that. But we're all going to suffer for it. I didn't have anything to do with it either. And don't look at us. We didn't kick over any statues. You've got to help us, Jamie. Well, what do you expect me to do? We're going over to the city council meeting right now and see if they won't listen to our side before they do anything about it. Mr. McPherson said we could go. He excused us from school. And he said you could go with us. Look, all of you, leave me out of everything you're planning. All I want to do is mind my own business. But this is your business, Jamie. You heard him. He's not going anywhere. He's no sap. We're going to the city council. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh. Right now, you guys are more afraid than we are, but you're not fooling us. You think you can laugh at anybody who stands up to you, and pretty soon everyone else is laughing at him, and you think you've won. Well, I don't care if you laugh or not. It won't be funny if the city council does what they're talking about. I wouldn't advise any of you to go to that meeting if I were you. I'm warning you. Are you going with us, Jamie? No, he's not. I'm talking to Jamie. What do you want me to do? They'll listen to you, Jamie, because it was your dad that... I'll go with you. You're not going anywhere. about pranks and letting off speed. We're talking about criminal acts of violence. I say if these kids want to go around beating up people and wrecking things to prove how tough they are, then it's time we prove to them just how tough we are. Mayor Honeywell, could we say something? I'm, I'm sorry. What's all I... this? Do you have some facts to give us that we don't already have? I don't know whether you'd call them facts or not, but, well, everybody keeps talking about teenagers as if we were a bunch of freaks or something. We're just wasting time. We wasted too much time already. We've invited Mr. McPherson here. He's principal of the high school, and he can tell us anything these kids can tell us. No, no, I'm sorry, I can't. That's why when these students came to me today, I asked them if they'd be willing to come down here and put their case before you. And I think you should hear what they have to say. This is Bill Stilwell, the head of the student council, and Chuck Leewood, captain of our football team. And Sally Lawrence here, uh, the senior class president, and... And Jamie's, Jamie's dad was the one who got hurt last night. Mr. Mayor, I think Mr. McPherson's right. And I think these students are right, too. Teenagers aren't all delinquents. Only a few are involved in these criminal acts that we're all concerned about. If these teenagers, who represent all of the rest, have the courage to come here, then I think we should not only listen to them, but I think we should invite them to help us stamp out this vandalism. I say, let's let them talk. All right. We don't want to punish all teenagers for the trouble a few are causing, but something has to be done. You know how serious the juvenile delinquency problem has become. We have to take some action to prevent this sort of thing from happening again. 
Now, if you have some suggestions to offer, we're willing to listen to you. What can we do? And what can you do to prevent juvenile delinquency? You tell us. What would you do if you were Jamie? What can we do about juvenile delinquency? What would you say 